What's up, brother? In today's video, I'm going to teach you the simple and effective nutrition strategy that I employ with all of my coaching clients who are looking to build muscle, burn body fat, maximize their energy and their performance, and optimize their hormone levels. And over the next 15 minutes, not only am I gonna teach you this strategy, but I'm going to help you to understand exactly why it works so well, why most conventional diets fail, and I'm also going to include a list of the foods that you should avoid and the types of foods that you should focus on consuming. And just so that you know, I'm not just some hack who's coming up with bright ideas and sharing them in a YouTube video. Over the past five years since I started coaching men online, I've helped thousands of men. That includes over 2,000 one-on-one coaching clients between me and my five-member staff, over 40,000 free programs given away, which include the guidelines in this program, and we currently have over 12,000 active members on our mobile app who use the programs that we offer on the Iron Forge website. And the nutrition strategy that I'm going to teach you has yet to fail for those who stick to it, stay consistent and disciplined, and follow the guidelines that I'm gonna provide you. Now, I'm sure you've probably already noticed so far, I don't call this a diet. And the reason for that is because diets, the truth is they fail. I don't know if you know this, but 80% of the people who lose weight on a diet gain all of that weight back within the first year. And 90% of people who lose weight on a diet gain it back within the second year. What does that mean? That means 90% of diets fail. And the reason for that, in my opinion, is because of the concept of how diets work at their core. If you've done a diet, I'm sure you probably know that it starts with telling you what you can't eat. You put yourself immediately in a place of scarcity, right? Carnivore, keto, paleo, vegan, vegetarian, all of those diets start with this is what you can't eat. The way that I teach my clients is there is no restriction on the foods that you can or can't eat. Instead, what I do is I teach you how to make the right decisions based upon what you want. And so that starts with understanding the concept of macronutrients. On this video, I'm not gonna go into extreme detail on what macros are and how they work, how to calculate them and all that, but I will include the links to free resources on my website. So not only can you get a deeper understanding of what macronutrients are and how they work, but also a free calculator that you can use to find your macro targets if that's what you'd like to do. So there's three types, technically four types of macronutrients. The first type of macronutrient which is essential for every person, is protein. And proteins typically come from animals or sometimes, if you're vegan, plants. Now, this is not me just sharing my opinion. I understand that there are some vegans out there who are sensitive about their choices. But what I will tell you is that based upon studies, science, and the results that I've seen with my clients, the best source of protein for you are sources of protein that come from animals. That means lean sources of meat, chicken, beef, turkey, fish, etc. You can also get protein from dairy as well as nuts, beans, and seeds in small amounts. Protein is absolutely essential for you to not only maintain but build muscle. And the reason for that is because when it's digested, it's broken down into amino acids, which are ultimately used to rebuild your muscles. The second type of macronutrient is healthy fats. Healthy fats typically come from actual fat. So they can come from the animal protein that you consume. In fact, if you are eating animal protein, that's where most of your fat is going to come from. But you can also get them from nuts, beans, seeds, oils, like olive oil, as well as things like avocados. Healthy fats are absolutely essential for you as well. That's, they are what your body uses to absorb fat-soluble vitamins, and fats are also used to help your body to regulate your hormones. For most people, it's not very difficult to stay on track with healthy fats because, again, most of that's going to come naturally through the course of you eating your lean sources of protein. 
And then the third macronutrient, it is carbohydrates. Carbohydrates are not necessarily essential for you to survive, but they are essential for you to build muscle and optimize your performance. Carbohydrates are not only what your body uses as a source of immediate energy, but they're also what your body uses to transport the amino acids that you consume to your muscles. If you've met any of the big, huge bodybuilders that you see, what they'll tell you is that you're not going to build a significant amount of muscle, regardless of what drugs you take, unless you're consuming carbohydrates, period. And the last macronutrient, I guess this is considered a bonus macro, is alcohol. In addition to alcohol being non-essential, there's two important points to understand about how it works. The first is it's extremely energy dense. So carbohydrates and protein, they have four calories per gram. Healthy fats have nine calories per gram. And alcohol is seven calories per gram. So alcohol is very close in terms of the energy density of healthy fats, except the only difference is it has zero nutritional value meaning there's nothing in alcohol that your body can even use to its benefit. The second piece that you need to know about alcohol is that when you consume it, your body prioritizes its metabolization. And so what that means for you is that if your body detects alcohol in your system, it will literally stop burning fat so that it can burn the alcohol that's in your bloodstream. This is gonna have a negative impact on your metabolism as well as your lean muscle mass. And so the reason I included alcohol as a macro is because it's something that we wanna count and consider when we're planning our meals and we're putting ourselves in a position where we're trying to get healthy, lose weight, build muscle, etc. You don't have to cut the alcohol out and say no to it, but you do have to consider it, if that makes sense. All right, so why is all of this important? The reason why this is all important is because calories are just a measurement of energy. And so I'm sure you've probably heard the concept, maybe you have, maybe you haven't, of being in a calorie deficit. In order for us to burn excess body fat, we have to put ourselves in a calorie deficit. That means that I have to be in a energy deficit in order for my body to use energy stores as a source of fuel to keep me going. So the first thing that we have to do to figure out what that energy or calorie target is, is we have to find out what we call our TDEE. And that's just a fancy word for total daily energy expenditure. And frankly, there's no accurate way to truly measure what your individual TDEE is. There are calorie calculators out there like the one on my website that use pretty close formulas to figure it out for you or at least give you a starting point. But the most important thing that you have to understand is if we're gonna employ this strategy, we have to be measuring our progress. If I'm consuming, just to give you an example, 2000 calories per day, I have to make sure that I measure on a week to week basis the changes that are happening in my body and then optimize or adjust my intake based upon the results that I see. This is probably the biggest mistake that most people make when they're trying to use this type of macro counting strategy for reaching their health goals is they don't track their progress and they don't adjust their intake based upon what they see. Now, what I'll tell you out of the gate is that if you're trying to lose weight, really what you're trying to do is lose body fat. Those are two different things. Our goal is to lose the body fat without losing the muscle mass. And the reason that we don't want to lose the muscle mass is because muscle is one of the things that has the greatest influence on our metabolism. The higher our metabolism, the more calories we burn. The more calories we burn, the faster the results that we're going to see when we're trying to lose body fat. And so one of the biggest mistakes that most people make is they try to use the scale as a way to measure their progress. This is bad. 
And the reason for that is because when you start exercising, changing your diet and making changes to your routine, there are so many other variables that are going to impact your relationship with gravity. It's not just the body fat on your frame. If you're working out, you're also probably building muscle. So we find ourselves in a position where you're building muscle and losing fat at the same time. I've seen clients who over a period of three or four months of working with me haven't lost any weight. So how do we measure progress? Well, the easiest and most accurate way that I've found is a concept that I call the string test. And all you do is you get a piece of yarn and you wrap that piece of yarn around at your belly button and you cut it to length. Once you get that piece of yarn, tape it to your wall. The next week you do it again. And if the string is getting shorter, then that means that you're seeing the progress that you wanna see. Then that means you probably need to take a little bit of food away. And if the string is getting longer, that definitely means that you need to take some food away. A string test is easy, simple, effective, and efficient. Now, there are some other things that you can do, such as the in-body scans, fat calipers, etc. But in my opinion, if you're trying to look for a reliable, easy, effective way, just use the string test and it does the job. Now, now to get into it, I want you to think about what your goal weight is, okay? For this to work properly, we can't go greater than 50 pounds at a time. So 200 to 250, 350 to 300, so forth and so on. Okay. And this concept not only applies to nutrition, but it applies to everything in life. I have to do before I be. That's it. And so if I want to weigh 200 pounds instead of 230, then I need to eat as if I was 200 pounds. And I know that seems like an oversimplification, and I'm sure there are variables that impact people and medical conditions. Understand that the advice that I'm giving is for the 99%. This strategy has yet to fail me with the thousands of people that I've helped. And so let's go back for me, 200 pounds. The way that we do that is very simple. I eat 0.8 grams of protein per pound of my goal weight. So if I'm 200, I take that number, I multiply it by 0.8 and I got 160 grams. So every day I need to eat 160 grams of protein. Now keep in mind, this is for fat loss. After this, I'll give you the goal for muscle building. I want to eat 0.5 grams per pound of my goal body weight of healthy fats. So if my goal weight is 200 pounds, I need to eat 100 grams of fat and carbs is the variable. Typically what I do is I use carbs as a slider to optimize performance. With carbs, you can go as high as one gram per pound for fat loss. So we'll just say 160 grams. But I can slide that to the left to get more aggressive results at the expense of performance. So if I completely cut carbs out, I can do that but it's going to affect how I feel. I'm gonna feel like crap. And I'm sure in the comment section, we'll probably get some keto nerds who are talking about how they've been in ketosis for X number of however long. But the truth is, the reason why they feel like they're able to maintain this extremely low carb lifestyle is because they're consuming more carbs than they think they are. I don't believe that you should go extremely low carb. And the reason for that is because if I'm lifting weight in the gym, that's going to directly impact how I perform and the results that I see from the work that I'm doing there, as well as my ability to recover. You need carbs to recover. And so what I would say is a good target for carbs to start with is start out with a half a gram per pound of your goal weight and then adjust from there based upon how you feel. Know that you can go as high as in this case 160 if you need to, but start around 80 to 100. That way you have that buffer to go either way based upon preference. Now, this seems very complicated, so I'm just gonna recap, right? All you do for this strategy is you identify your goal weight within 50 pounds. Whatever that goal weight is, is we eat 0.8 grams of protein per pound of that goal weight. So if I'm 200, 
just it's 160 a half a gram per pound of healthy fats so in this case 100 grams and then we'll start at a half a gram per pound of carbs so in this case 100 grams of carbs where does that put us well we have 160 grams of protein so that's 640 calories we have 100 grams of fat right which is 900 calories and we have 100 grams of carbs which is another 400 calories so that brings us out to a grand total of about 1940 calories then literally all you have to do is get yourself a mobile app like my fitness pal or if you want access to my mobile app that has calorie counting built into it, click the link in the description. You can go to my website. I have a bunch of programs you can buy and you'll get access to the app. And all you do is just go onto the app, type in the foods that you consumed and how much for every meal. And then at the end of the day, it's going to tell you exactly where you stand as far as your macros are concerned. Then every week you do the string test and you measure, did I see progress or not? If I did see progress, great, do it again. If I didn't see progress, take everything that you consumed, cut it by 10%, do it again next week. That's it, it's that simple. Now, there's other nuance to it. And in future videos, I'll talk about more advanced concepts like metabolic adaptation and reverse dieting. But for now, this solution will get you 90% of the way there. Now, what's different about what I'm teaching you versus every other macro counting, calorie counting coach and app and program that you find out there? Well, I don't believe that counting macros is a long-term, what we'll say, sustainable solution to seeing progress. I believe that counting macros is a phenomenal tool that's just like training wheels. Most people, the reason why they struggle with their weight has nothing to do with the fact that they don't know how to count calories. They cannot control what they put in their mouth. The way that I believe is the most effective long-term solution for fat loss and being healthy is I should use macro counting as a tool for me to see what right looks like. Break my total calories for the day down into three meals and maybe two snacks. Get a good understanding of what that plate looks like, how much food it is, how I feel when I eat it, how much effort it takes to prepare it, what that visually looks like. So then not only am I getting an understanding of, okay, this is right, but I'm also showing my body and building that habit where I say, hey, this is how you're eating now. And now you know when you're actually hungry. You know what true hunger feels like. You know what it feels like to feel satisfied from a meal. And you like the way you feel and perform while you do this, so it reinforces the habit. Then, once you've established that positive habit and get a good idea of what right looks like, then we can come off of the macro counting. Now you know my plate should have at least this much protein. I need about this much carbs and I need to ensure that these healthy fats are included in every meal that I consume. And this becomes second nature for you. And so that's step two. Step one is figure out your macros, become accustomed to measuring your food and eating that way. Step two is to wean off of the macro strategy and be able to do it based upon how you feel and what you see right? And then step three, which is where I bring most of my clients who've been with me for years, is now you just have the ability to make the right decisions. I can go into restaurants or go out to eat or enjoy social gatherings with my friends where I don't have to make this big ordeal about the fact that I'm a healthy eater. I just eat what's available to me based upon what I know is the best decision. And I'm able to make those choices on the fly. And even if I decide I want to have a cheat meal or a day off or have some pizza or a cheeseburger or whatever the case may be, I can do it without guilt because I understand the impact that's going to have for my overall strategy for consumption and I can just optimize and adjust that later. And the goal with this strategy is to empower you with the knowledge of this is the way that I want to feel. And when I eat this way, it makes me feel good 
I like feeling good, so I'm going to keep doing this. We don't really focus on the weight loss. We don't really focus on the fat loss. Sure, we can optimize and measure over time, but the truth is this strategy is designed to help you to optimize your performance. That, my friend, is the most sustainable long-term health strategy that you can employ that's going to solve this problem for you in perpetuity. Nobody wants to be the guy who's measuring food everywhere they go or carrying around their little Tupperware to social gatherings and, and holidays. That's not necessary for you to do those things. But at the same time, you don't have to be the guy who lacks the discipline and the self-control where every time you go to one of those events, you completely indulge and go off the deep end and make poor decisions. And so the only way to put you in a place where you not only learn the concept of temperance when it comes to the foods that you eat, but you also need to understand how those foods affect you. Now, there's a couple of details that I left out that I just wanna to quickly touch on that are gonna help you when you're building your meal plan. There's something that I've found that does a really, really good job of helping your body to manage your hormone levels when you consume food, and that's fiber. You wanna to try to consume carbs either that are high in dietary fiber or accompany them with dietary fiber. You can find fiber and carbs like oatmeal or sweet potatoes. You can also find fiber in leafy green veggies like kale, asparagus, broccoli, etc. Make sure that when you consume a carb, it's also accompanied by fiber. And what this does is it prevents your insulin levels from spiking when you consume that food and it helps to keep things normalized. This prevents you from getting cravings after you've come down off of that insulin spike. The other thing that I want to point out is that there's a secret that the American food industry doesn't tell you. And that's the fact that most foods that you see that come in a grocery store that are processed, it's not the carbohydrates in that food that are terrible for you. It's the seed oils. So if you look at the nutrition facts, go into your pantry and find a box of crackers or cookies or Oreos or something that you know is processed that you have in there and look on there and you're going to have some type of seed oil as one of the main ingredients. It's going to be canola oil, sunflower oil, safflower oil, cotton seed oil, grape seed oil, corn oil, and here's why. What happens when you consume them? They begin to oxidize. And when they oxidize, they produce harmful chemicals, namely trans fat and peroxides. Those harmful chemicals that are going into your body are not only producing very toxic visceral fat, but they're also the cause of diseases like cancer and Alzheimer's. And so the more processed foods, the more seed oils that you consume, the more oxidation is occurring in your body producing more visceral fat and you're also introducing these harmful toxins to your body that cause these pretty nasty diseases. Now what's really sad and this is the part that I hate to say is that most restaurants the primary oil that they use is canola oil. Olive oil is expensive. Canola oil very cheap. And so most of the food that you consume, even in nice restaurants where you go and you sit down, are cooked in seed oils. And so pretty much any restaurant you go to, you're putting these toxins in your body and you don't realize it. And now that you know about seed oils, start looking on the nutrition facts and the ingredients of all of your favorite foods that you buy from the grocery store. Most of them will have seed oils. Almond milk has seed oils. Oat milk has seed oils. All these quote unquote healthy things that you're finding in the grocery store all have immense amount of seed oils in them and they're killing you. Your goal should be to try to shop the perimeter of the grocery store and stay away from anything that's processed or made inside of a factory, period. That includes all of the vegan options that you see out there. They're loaded with these foods that are terrible for your body and they are killing you. Most of the reason why people are so bloated and inflamed and they struggle with their digestion and this whole process of fat loss is such a huge struggle for them is because of the high consumption of these toxic foods that they're eating every day. 
all right, now to get off of that rant, but my goal here with this basic nutrition 101 is to give you the tools and knowledge and the resources that you need to shift your habits. Understand that going on a diet, keto, carnivore, whatever the case may be, any of these fad throw a label on it that everybody's talking about online, they may seem like they work for the short term, but these are not long-term sustainable habits that you can implement into your life forever. And they're not going to help you with your longevity. The strategy that I've taught you here tonight is not only going to teach you how to get where you want to go, but it's dynamic enough to optimize and adjust based upon how your goals change after you've achieved that weight loss goal. So anyway, like I said, there's going to be future videos where I talk about some of the more advanced protocols that we implement for some of our longer term clients, such as reverse dieting and things like that. But I think this video will give you a really great start on moving towards your goals. And if you feel like you need help building a meal plan or getting the workout so that you line on figuring this process out yourself, I'll leave a link to my website in the description, including my macro guide and the calorie calculator. So all those resources are there if you decide you want to use them. And last thing before I close this out, my name is Josh Holyfield. This is the Josh Holyfield podcast. I record these videos every day to hopefully provide you with value. So if you have questions that you feel like I can help you with that are related to being a better man, health, wealth, relationships, mindset, drop them in the comments and I'll do my absolute best to record a video that helps you move in the direction that you're trying to move when trying to become the best version of yourself. Stay vigilant and I'll see you tomorrow.